Welcome everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will continue with the basic definitions of general theory of fully algebras. So, we will begin with uh, homomorphisms. So, let uh, G and uh, G dash be two given Lie algebras. A homomorphism from G to G dash it is first of all a C linear map, let us call it pi. So, it is a C linear map satisfying the following condition. So, if you take pi of the bracket x y, so that is supposed to be equal to the bracket of pi of x pi of y and this should be true for all x y in G. So, that means this pi is not only a C linear map, it also preserves the Lie structure. So, we use both homomorphism or Lie homomorphism to denote uh, this kind of maps. So, this pi is called Lie homomorphism. Okay. So, now uh, we will define other terminologies uh, like subalgebra, ideals and so on. So, what is a subalgebra? So, let us say G be a Lie algebra. A subspace G dash a subspace G dash of G is said to be a Lie subalgebra if whenever we take the product bracket x y that should be in G dash for all x y in G dash. So, that means you have this uh, Lie bracket uh, defined from G cross G to G. When you restrict that map to G dash cross G dash, then it should be a map from G dash cross G dash to G dash. So, when you take this bracket map restricted to G dash cross G dash, then it should define a map from G dash cross G dash to G dash. So, that is what uh, we call it as subalgebra. So, now uh, one can easily check this is easy exercise. So, G dash with respect to this restricted map is indeed a Lie subalgebra. So, this itself is a Lie algebra and which is also called Lie subalgebra of G. So, we will be interested in various uh, Lie subalgebras of given Lie algebra. Okay. So, before that uh, we need to define the most important object called ideals. The ideals, it is a subalgebra, yes, subalgebra or even a subspace just to begin with, okay. Yes, subspace i of g is said to be an ideal if whenever we take the bracket bracket x y that should be in i for all x in i and y in g. Okay? So, this is like very similar to what we define ideals for the general associative uh, algebras. Okay. Uh, but since uh, the bracket that we have here, it is uh, skew symmetric. So, that means the bracket of x y is same as the bracket of minus y x for all x y and g. So, because of this, we do not have any difference between left ideal, right ideal or two sided ideals. All of them are same here. Okay. The left ideal, right ideal and two sided ideals, all these concepts will know will be same 
in the theory of uh, Lie algebras. So now uh, we have this uh, ideals and subalgebras. So now given this uh, homomorphism, so one can actually define immediately what is called isomorphism of Lie algebras. So we say G and G dash are isomorphic as Lie algebras if there exists a bijective homomorphism between them. If there exists a bijective homomorphism from G onto G dash. So, it is an easy exercise uh, to see that if you have a bijective map homomorphism from G to G dash, then the set theoretic map that is defined the inverse of that map pi which we denoted by pi inverse. So, that will be again Lie algebra homomorphism. So, that is easy to verify I will leave it to you too. So, that is why we demand only bijective homomorphism from G onto G dash because the inverse becomes automatically Lie homomorphism. So, once we have these uh, terminologies now it is easy to actually state the first theorem first isomorphism theorem of uh, first isomorphism theorem. So, let us actually state it here is the theorem. So, this theorem is very similar to what you have seen in uh, other uh, algebraic for other algebraic objects. So, let us say G and G dash both are given both be given uh, Lie algebras. And let us say we have a map Lie algebra homomorphism from G to G dash. So, this is a Lie algebra homomorphism. So, then once we have this Lie algebra homomorphism, we will be able to define the following objects. The very first object is what is called the kernel. The kernel is defined as for as it is for the C linear maps. This is those x in g such that when you act pi on that x that should be 0. So, this is what called a kernel of g and it is easy to verify that this kernel is indeed ideal inside g. So, this is an ideal of g. So, we denote ideals by this uh, tilted triangle. So, similarly we also have uh, this image of pi or pi of g. So, this is a set of all the image pi of x, x in g. So, this is a subalgebra of g dash. So, this is a subalgebra of g dash. So, now given these two objects, we can easily see that uh, we can define this quotient space g modulo the kernel of pi. So, this is by definition you take all the cosets x plus kernel pi such that x in g. Okay. One can make, so this is a quotient space. So, this can be made into a Lie algebra. By defining the following Lie bracket. So, we define the Lie bracket x plus kernel pi bracket y plus kernel pi. So, this is the Lie bracket that is induced from the ambient Lie algebra G. So, this is defined to be the bracket x y plus the kernel pi. So, I will leave it to you to check this I indeed defines actually Lie algebra structure on G modulo kernel pi. So, this is defined for all x y and g. Okay. So, this uh, Lie bracket makes this G modulo kernel pi as a quotient Lie algebra. So, now with this we have actually the following uh, first isomorphism theorem. So, with these notations we have this induced map pi tilde which is defined from G modulo kernel pi on to this pi of G which is the image of G image of pi. 
So, the map pi tilde is defined to be pi tilde of x plus kernel pi is mapped to pi of x. So, now one can easily check this is indeed a bijective map from g modulo kernel pi to this pi of g. So, as a C linear map it makes sense and as a vector spaces they are isomorphic. So, then you can easily see that. So, these two are actually this pi tilde that is defined here is indeed bijective map and because pi is to begin with Li algebra homomorphism. So, from this one can easily check this pi tilde is also a Li algebra homomorphism. So, that means this pi tilde indeed defines an isomorphism. So, this is an isomorphism. So, isomorphism of Li algebras. Okay. So, I will leave it to, to check these facts. So, this is somewhat uh, easy to actually check. So, now if we take for example, uh, as an examples. So, if we take any one dimensional Lie algebra, so that must be abelian that is we have already seen. But if we take any two one dimensional algebra that must be isomorphic to any two one dimensional Lie algebras must be isomorphic. Similarly, if we take uh, two dimensional Lie algebra, then one can prove that either it will be isomorphic to abelian Lie algebra or it will be isomorphic to the following one. Okay. So, any non abelian two dimensional Lie algebra is isomorphic to the following Lie algebra which we denoted by G2. So, this is the C span of E11, E12 which sits inside GL2. So, recall that Eij is the standard basis of GLN and we take uh, just to 2 by 2 matrices E11, E12 and then span this. So, then this subspace inside GL2 is a subalgebra. So, this is a two dimensional non abelian subalgebra and any two dimensional non abelian subalgebra, sorry, any two dimensional uh, non abelian Lie algebra will be isomorphic to this algebra. So, the Lie bracket uh, is easy to compute if you compute E11, E12, the bracket. So, this is going to be E11, E12 minus E12, E11, which is going to be just E12. So, again, the bracket E11 with E11 will be 0 and E12 with E12 will be 0. So, now using this. Uh, Lie brackets, it is easy to check G2 is indeed Lie subalgebra of GL2. Okay. So, now uh, we will define the most important objects uh, in, uh, uh, st the, in the structure theory of Lie algebra, which are called simple Lie algebras. So, what is simple Lie algebra? So, a Lie algebra G is said to be simple. Okay. So, we will be only concerned with uh, finite dimensional Lie algebras in this course. So, you can assume that uh, just we are dealing with only finite dimensional Lie algebras. So, let us say G is given Lie algebra. So, this is said to be simple if it should satisfy two conditions. First condition is that the dimension of G must be greater than 1. So, that we avoid the trivial cases and the second condition the only ideals that are there in G of G are nothing but the 0 and the full ideal G. So, it is easy to see the, tri the trivial ideals 0 and G they are ideals inside G and these are all the only ideals of G inside G. So, in that case we say that G is actually simple Lie algebra. So, this is just a simple definition. 
So, now uh, we can also define what is called the center of G. The center of G is defined to be those elements of G which commutes with all other elements of G. So, that means you collect those x in G such that the bracket x y is 0 for all y in G. And I will leave it to you to check, it is easy to check that the center must be ideal inside G. So, this is an ideal. Now, we also have what is called the derived subalgebra or a derived algebra of G. The derived algebra is defined to be the span of all brackets. You take span of all bracket x, y where x and y comes from G. Okay? And this is indeed again subspace and it is an ideal inside G. So, the, the bracket G, G is an ideal inside G. And it is an easy exercise that if you have a subspace, let us call it I is a subspace of G. Suppose I actually I actually contains the derived algebra. So, then I must be ideal inside G. So, that is easy to see. Again, similarly, if I is contained in the center, then again I is an ideal in G. So, this, this is something very easy to verify. So, I will leave it to you to check. So, now given uh, two subspaces, uh, motivated from the derived algebra, one can actually define the bracket of H1, H2. So, generally given two subspaces, given two subspaces H1 and H2 of G, we define the bracket H1 comma H2 to be the span of all this x, y such that x is coming from H1 and y is coming from H2. Okay. So, in case if you start with uh, H1, H2 to be ideals, okay, to begin with their ideals, so then it is easy to see that this bracket is also an ideal and it is indeed contained in the intersection and all of them are ideals. Okay. This H1, H2, the bracket is ideal inside G and H1 intersection H2, this is an ideal in G and H1 plus H2, that also will be ideal inside G. H1 plus H2, it is just uh, sum of all elements from H1 and H2. So, these are all some simple exercise that actually part of the general theory of Lie algebras. So, to uh, understand this adjoint representation, one should, one needs to understand all the ideals of G. So, that is why we need to know some information about the ideals. That is why I am recalling all these results. So, here is the uh, important theorem that actually gives you the correspondence between the ideals of G and then uh, the ideals of its image under some Lee homomorphism. So, this theorem again I am not going to prove it, I am going to only state it. So, this is called uh, uh, lattice isomorphism theorem. Okay. So, if you start with a surjective Lie algebra homomorphism, let us call it pi. Okay. Let us say pi is a surjective Lie algebra homomorphism. So, then using this map pi, one can actually define uh, this following bijection between the ideals of G containing the kernel and the ideal of the image. So, what are all the sets? So, here is the set on the right side. You take the set of all ideals of G containing this kernel pi and then you can define this one to one correspondence between this set to 
the following set the set of all ideals of this pi of g which is g dash. So, what is the map? There is this natural map. You start with an ideal here i inside g which let us say contains the kernel. So, then you just map that to pi of i and similarly if you start with an ideal i dash inside g dash then you map that to just pi inverse of i dash then clearly pi inverse of i dash contains this kernel pi which is pi inverse of 0. Okay, and it is easy to verify that this correspondence is indeed bijective correspondence. So, this is indeed bijective correspondence between these two sets. So, this gives actually information about uh, the ideals of G containing kernel and uh, what is happening in the image. Okay. So, now we will actually see some uh, more important examples. Uh, so, like I said this course will be about the representations of GLN. So, we need to understand what are all the various uh, subalgebras, those are important subalgebra of GLN. So, they actually help us to understand the structure of GLN. So, let us actually slowly recall. So, like I said our running example will be always uh, GL2 or SL2. So, let us fix some notations. So, what is GL2? So, GL2 is the set of all 2 by 2 matrices and uh, it is clear that it is spanned by, so the dimension of GL2 will be 4. So, this is spanned by E11 and then E12, E21 and then E22 and uh, this SL2s, so that will be traceless matrices from this GL2. So, this is those x in GL2 such that the trace of x must be 0. So, then it is easy to see that this is again spanned by uh, 3 elements. So, because the dimension of SL2 is 1 less than the dimension of GL2 which is 3. So, we denote the standard basis of this SL2 by x, h and y where this x is just the upper triangular matrix 0, 1, 0, 0. So, that means this is 0, e 1 2 and this h by this uh, diagonal matrix 1 0 0 minus 1. So, this is nothing but e 1 1 minus e 2 2 and similarly this y by this lower triangular matrix 0 1 0 0. So, this is e 2 1. Then it is easy to check if you compute the commutator between them then the bracket x y. So, this is going to be x y minus y x which is e 1 2 times e 2 1 minus e 2 1 times e 1 2. So, which is going to be e 1 1 minus e 2 2. So, this is nothing but h. Similarly, if you compute uh, the bracket between h x then you get 2 x and then h y is going to give you minus 2 y. I will leave it you to check. So, this is the most important uh, actually bracket table for SL2. So, with this basis bracket uh, of these elements given as follows the bracket of xx, hh and yy. So, that must be 0 and then the bracket of hx is going to be 2x and the bracket of hy is going to be minus 2y and similarly the bracket of x y is going to be h. So, this is the most important uh, structure constants of this uh, SL2. Okay, now, let us see how one can use this to understand the structure of SL2. Okay, then later we will actually try to understand uh, the structure of GL2 and uh, more generally SLN and GLN. So, it is easy to see that uh, GL2 is nothing but direct sum of SL2 and this identity matrix. Uh, 2 by 2 identity matrix. Now, this identity matrix is going to actually commit with all the elements of GL2 and now uh, one can easily see that this is going to be actually direct sum of uh, 2 Lie algebras. So, we will define the direct sum later in this course. So, now uh, what do I want to prove? I want to prove that uh, this SL2 is indeed a simple Lie algebra. 
okay so this is first example of simple algebra so here is the result sl2 is a simple algebra so the idea of proving this sl2 is very important again here implicitly we are using the representation theory of sl2 okay so basically we are making sl2 act on itself so let us see how one can prove this. So note that SL2 is nothing but the C span of these elements X, H and Y with the Lie bracket XY is H and then HX is 2X and then HY is minus 2Y. Now from these formulas we can easily see that the bracket uh, HX, HY being like 2X and minus 2Y and HX h h is 0. So, if you look at this add h map from s l 2 s l 2. So, then you can easily see that this add h map is diagonalizable. So, what are all the Eigen values? The Eigen values being 0, 2 and minus 2. So, the add h okay. So, let us use this the order in these spaces like this. So, h, x, h and y, if you use that order basis, then the matrix of this looks like, so h, x is 2, x and then h, h is 0 and then minus 2. So, this is the matrix corresponding to uh, this add h. So, now, uh, because of this, uh, if we have any ideal inside SL2, so, let uh, i being non-zero ideal inside SL2. So, then we can restrict the action of add h to this i. Then this has to map i to i. So, that is the first observation. Since add h is diagnosable operator on SL2, if you restrict that operator to i, that also must be diagnosable. So, this is a diagonalizable operator. So, now because this is diagonalizable, so and all the eigenspaces of add h is one dimensional for SL2 and uh, there are three distinct eigenvalues 2, 0 and minus 2, then you can see that this add h restricted to i also must have some eigenvalue non-zero sorry some eigenvalue and with the non-zero eigenspace since all the eigenspaces of SL2 is one dimensional. So, that tells us that uh, the eigenspace at least one of the eigenspace okay, at least one of the eigenspaces. So, let us call it like V2, V v2, v0 and v-2. So, basically v2 is spanned by x, v0 spanned by h and v-2 is spanned by y. So, then it is clear that at least one of the eigenspaces lie inside h, sorry inside i. So, without loss of generality one can assume that just let us say x is there, okay, just c x is there inside i, then this would imply that the bracket x y which is h is inside i and that would imply that the bracket h y which is minus 2 i which is in i. So, this implies that entire S L 2 is subspace of i. So, that means we have i equal to S L 2. And the proof actually is very similar if you assume that C y is subspace of i or h is subspace of i. If h is subspace of i, then you can easily see that h x, the bracket h x which is 2 x that is also inside i that will imply x is in i. Similarly, if y is sub, C y is subspace of i, then the bracket y x which will be minus h that will be in i that also will imply i equal to S L 2. So, this proves that S L 2 is simple. Algebra. So, now 
using this and using this decomposition gl2 equal to sl2 direct sums c times identity so we will actually determine the structure of gl2 as well okay so we will actually uh, continue to study the uh, structure of uh, gln in the next class uh, i will stop here thanks